Welcome to Property Weekly, Kenya's premier television magazine show that serves you a weekly cocktail of all matters real estate. It's here the we scan the market to bring you the real issues and deals while answering questions you need answered by the best brains in Kenya's property market. I'm your host, Patrick Igunza. Welcome to Property Weekly, the only television magazine show in Kenya that shines the spotlight on the real estate sector. I'll be your host, Patrick Igunza. Let's first have a look at the latest news and developments in Kenya's property scene on the property scan. Nairobi's Eastlands area is fast transforming into a middle class residential area. The latest index report on the area from Has Consult shows. A 9% jump in rental prices across the neighborhoods of Buruburu, Donholm, Nyayo Estate, Tena, Komarok, and Imara Daima. This compared to the 9% fall in rental prices in high end areas of Westlands, Parklands, Kigeri, Lower Kabete, Muthaiga, and Spring Valley. Analysts from Has Consult say the current trend is being augmented by the availability of land and the rapid infrastructure network improvement that has now opened up access to Eastlands via new public transport routes. Uh, with, with the infrastructure growth in these areas, it's inevitable that prices are going to rise because the reason why nobody wanted to be in Ruai or Donholm or all of these areas was because of congestion. You couldn't get in and out very easily. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you look at it, the transport network is quite phenomenal. There's a commuter rail coming in. Um, there's these roads that are opening up the traffic avenues. So you're finding that there's more potential in these areas. Now Presently, the average house price in Islands is at 5 million shillings, for on compound houses and villas compared with the 20 million shillings prices of the same in Westlands. The soon to be completed 8.5 billion shillings Eastern Bypass is also said to aid in the growth of Eastlands area, which now boasts eight bank branches, five supermarkets, two malls, and diverse private enterprises. Has Consult has now marked out the area as one of Nairobi's best residential investments for current returns and yields, with capital appreciation on property pegged at 30% in the next 18 months. Meanwhile, Kenya has received a 1.6 billion shillings loan from Japan to help decongest the traffic in Nairobi. The funds will be spent on the expansion of Ngong Road into a dual carriageway between Adams Arcade and Kenyatta Avenue. The deal was signed on Saturday by Finance Minister Njeru Gidai on behalf of the government and Japan's ambassador to Kenya, Toshihisa Takata. If I remember correctly, 10 years mm. grace period, and mm. uh, then later 30 years, yes. three zero years of uh, repayment. And uh, interest That's rate is, uh, uh, I, I think, one point, just 1.2%. 1 this project will complement the Nairobi Missing Links project, also funded by Japan, which is near completion and which was commissioned by His Excellency the President uh, last year. The signing of the loan agreement from the government of Japan comes barely a fortnight since Kenya received a 29 billion shillings loan from Japan towards the construction of the 19.8 kilometers Dongokundu bypass and the 5.7 kilometers Kipevu link road to a new container terminal. As Kenya's real estate sector grows, the bias continues to be towards the development of properties for sale. 
But in a country where the cost of home ownership is way above the reach of many, should in the focus now turn towards providing more incentives for development of rental housing to meet the current housing challenge? Here's more on that debate on this week's Real Issue. Kenya's housing sector grew by 22% in 2011. This saw an estimated 46 billion shillings worth of new houses enter the market. But over the last decade, this growth has generally played in favor of properties for sale. According to the 2012 Quarter 1 Property Indices report from Real Estate Agent House Consult, the value of property for sale have increased threefolds since 2000. This compared to the growth on the rental side of 2.59 times since 2001. During the first quarter of this year, the index shows rental prices having risen by 4.4% compared to 5.5% during a similar period last year. A 1.4% rise in property prices, on the other hand, was recorded between January and March this year, compared to 1.4% during quarter one in 2011. The trend is attributed to the economic slowdown that has been occasioned by a sharp hike in lending interest rates, a situation that has resulted in an almost quiet property buying market. What this reflected was uh, this general approach of um, possible buyers to hold off decisions on buying and opt to rent instead. Uh, notably in the rental sector, we've seen that the middle to lower income areas have actually seen uh, an increase in rentals, more so than the upper market. So you'll find a lot of people who are either renters um, or you know, would-be owner-occupiers are resorting to rent now because that's a lower cost for them on a monthly basis. So is it high time that property developers considered shifting to rental properties? According to real estate expert Reginald Okumu, it is a foregone conclusion that players in the property market should have made given the fact that the current economic situation will make home ownership a dream for the majority. We need to ask ourselves, we have a lot of uh, rural to urban migration. You do not come into, the, into, the, into, the, into an urban area and the first thing you're looking for is a home to own. Uh, you're basically looking for a place where you can set up yourselves and, uh, and, and uh, pr prosper. Even when technology and partnerships are adopted to enhance home ownership, more so for the middle and low income earners, the end prices have proven a tall order for cash buys and an even taller one for home financing. When you move into a city and the only thing that is available to you is home ownership, you have no job, uh, you have basically no security, then how do you own this? Farana Hassanali, however, links this challenge to an unconducive property environment where returns on rentals, which are pegged at approximately 6 to 7 percent, are too low to cover the prevailing cost of financing. So this is one of the problems where you want the rental accommodation, but there is really not that much financial incentive for developers to keep properties for rental. So usually what happens is developers will build to sell to the second market, which is investors or occupiers. But Reginald Okomo believes that rental houses can provide attractive yields, especially to developers who are targeting the urban working population. In terms of business, there is a misconception that rental, rental housing does not give returns. Uh, it does. Uh, it does. There are high returns in, in rental houses if they are done right, uh, if there is right advice uh, uh, backed by good market studies. Um, and you're able to do that. I mean, there are quite a number of people in this uh, city and uh, other urban areas who have put up rental houses um, and uh, they are making the money. Hello, sir. Hi, how are you? Ben New, though, a retired banker, is among the developers that have ripped big from rental property. New, though, boasts of this apartment block along Thika Superhighway called Basilel Queso and which hosts 42 executive units. These one and two bedroom units are all rentals, going for 18 and 25,000 shillings a month, respectively, and none of them is vacant. I had visited quite a number of areas in Nairobi 
and realized people uh, can pay you good money. Even on Zika Road, if they got the proper, you know, they are designed, they are designed of houses. And that is why I decided, instead of uh, going to those other areas, I was going to put up uh, uh, executive frats. Nyudo says the secret of succeeding when venturing into rental property is to always guarantee value for a tenant's monthly pay. I would request those who are coming up with, uh, with houses, new premises, to make sure that they provide modern houses. If uh, they should not, uh, they should leave those old years when uh, they say the a rental house should be just a simple thing. They should make it very, very comfortable for that person who is uh, coming to rent. Egypt, Tunisia, and Morocco are among African countries that have tackled the housing challenge from a rental approach, and their market structures have also allowed private developers to sustainably chip in. But given Kenya's situation in which the demand for housing continues to outpace supply, providing more rental housing could be just what the doctor ordered to provide a measure of stability. Of course that means that there'll be pressure on rentals, uh, pressure on rental stock, and uh, the likelihood of that is then your supply becomes lower than your demand and then that pushes prices up. So, you know, again, it's a bit of a double-edged sword in terms of the way forward. I think the culture um, it needs to change. We, we need to ask ourselves what are our priorities. Our priority is first to provide shelter. Uh, ownership and renting are just two sides of the same coin.